Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you all for coming. So my research can mainly be classified into two long-term collaborations. The first one is regarding Fourier coefficients of automorphic forms in small automorphic representations. And um, today I'd like to talk about the second project, which is joined with Ben Brubaker, Valentin Bukumas, and Daniel Bump. And it relates non-Archimedean Vitica functions, solvable lattice models, special polynomials, and quantum groups. And today we'll fo mainly focus on the first three. To explain the idea, I will start with um, a toy example, where I will show how sure polynomials can be computing using a certain lattice model. So let lambda be a partition and define the Schur polynomial S lambda by this fraction of determinants. The Schur polynomials form a linear basis for the space of symmetric polynomials, and they play an important role in many areas of representation theory. But most importantly for us is that they are characters of finite dimensional uh, irreducible representation of GLRC. Indeed, if we write out these determinants in terms of these uh, permutations, we see that this is actually the wild character formula. And this will become important when we later uh, discuss Whittaker functions. To connect to our lattice model though, we will use another description of the Schur polynomial. So one can show that S lambda equals this sum over semi-standard Young tableaus T of shape lambda, where this is the weight of of T. The semi-standard Young tableaus are in bijection with the states or configurations of the lattice model, uh, which we will we'll describe by first mapping the tableaus to so-called Gelfand settling patterns. And this is done like this. The first row here is the shape lambda of the tableau. You get the second row uh, as the shape that remains when we rem remove the largest number in our alphabet, which is here three. And then the last row when we rem remove all the twos. Then we add this particular uh, arithmetically progressing Gelfand settling pattern to get this so-called left streak, left strict Gelfand settling pattern. And this is the one from this one we can most easily read off the state of our lattice model. So let me explain the setup for this, for the actual lattice model and the state. We have a two-dimensional grid of vertices with R rows and sufficiently many columns labeled like this. Each vertex has four edges connected to either its neighbors or the boundary. The state of the model is then a set of R non-overlapping paths along these edges going from the top boundary to the right boundary in a certain way. And to, to obtain the state of this Young tableau, we fill in the upper edges for the vertices in the upper first row according to the column numbers shown here in the first row of the Gelfand settling pattern, which is equal to lambda plus rho. So here we fill in four, two, and one. And next for the second row at three and one, and then at one. There's now a unique way to fill in the rest of the paths going from the top boundary to the right boundary, like this. And this is the state S that corresponds to the Young tableau. We see that at each of these vertices, we have one of five configurations shown here. These are the only allowed vertices and they give rise to the name phi vertex model. The bijection is between young tableaus and state built out of these vertices. And now I will show how the Schur polynomial itself equals the partition function of this lattice model. So let me define what I mean by that. First, 
we assign weights for all these different vertice conf configurations. At row i, we have zi, depending on the row number here. Then we assign a weight to the whole state by multiplying over all these vertices. And the partition function is defined as the sum, the partition function for a particular uh, lambda specified in these top positions for a particular boundary, the sum over states with these boundaries of this uh, weight for the state. We note that from each vertex, we get a power of z each time there's a filled in left edge here. And if we keep track of these left edges, in the bijection to the young tableaus, one finds this equality here for the uh, weight of the state, which very much resembles the sum and in the combinatorial formula for the shear polynomial. Here, W0 is the longest wide word. Since the states we sum over here in the partition function are in bijection with the semi standard young tableaus of shape lambda, we get that the partition function is the sure polynomial with C2 road. C to the row as a factor. Now we remember that these are symmetric in the argument, so we can just remove this w0, which, uh, re which uh, reverses the order of the z's. So how do Wittke functions fit into this picture? Well, it turns out that the uh, sure polynomials are Wittke functions in disguise. To see this, let me first give a definition of these Wittke functions. So we let G be GR of the um, p-adic numbers, and N be the suburb of the lower triangle matrices with union diagonal. A Wittekamp model for representation pi is then an embedding into this induced representation of a non-degenerate character psi on N to G. This means that the elements phi, which are the Wittekamp functions, are functions of G transforming in this certain way when we uh, multiply by an n here. And here we take um, v to be c and pi to be the unrefined principal series representation from a character on the diagonal matrices defined by this map here from this diagonal matrix to z to the lambda. So z is here the Langlands attacker parameters. So that's the setup. Now, there is a unique spherical uh, Wittig function, which is right invariant on the maximum compact, phi. And this phi is determined by this particular values on the torus, on, on the diagonal matrices. And uh, by the kesselmann schleicher formula, it is equal to a character on the langlands dual group, GLRC, which we mentioned at the very beginning, it's a sure polynomial. So it looks like this. Now we get this extra factor here, uh, but that can be incorporated into the lattice model by introducing another vertex configuration, this one here. So we get a six vertex model instead of a five vertex model. And the partition function for this one is z to the row and this spherical vertical function with this particular argument. So to summarize, we have shown the connection between spherical Wittig functions, uh, short polynomials, and lattice models. So why do we want to relate Wittig functions or special polynomials to lattice models? Well, with the identification, we get a new set of tools to study both sides. Lattice models are especially useful in proving various functional equations, Cauchy type identities or other combinatorial properties. So after this motivation, I will now describe another strategy for rewriting Wittig functions or special polynomials in terms of uh, lattice model, a partition function of a lattice model, when um, it's perhaps not feasible to go via a combinatorial description as we did before. So to do this, let me first state one of our recent results. Here we relax the condition that the Wittig function should be spherical and instead 
uh, we simply require it to be writing variant on the, the uh, Ivahori subgroup. A linear basis of these Ivahori Whitaker functions is numerated by the VAR group, like this. And we show that these elements can be computed using a similar lattice model, but here where each um, path has been given a color. And the while word here can be read off from the permutation of the colors on the right boundary. Specifically, we show that the partition function equals the same z theta rho factor times this eva hori Whittaker function. Now, the proof, uh, instead of going via the combinatorial description, uh, we use the fact that uh, the Whittaker function satisfies certain recursion relation with respect to this uh, wild word w here. Like this, so here t is an operator similar to the demonstrator lustig operators and looks like this. The details are not important. And we show that these recursion relations are equivalent to the so-called Jang-Baxter equation for the lattice model. And this is a tool coming from statistical mechanics with connection to quantum groups. So here's where the quantum group comes into the picture. In this setting for us, uh, what happens is that this Young-Baxter equation tells us um, what happens when we switch uh, two of these rows here. And more specifically, we get an equation for the parti partition functions that looks like this, where the coefficients here come from the quantum group. Now, since the Whittaker function and the partition function satisfy the same recursion relation, you can show this by solving for, for this last term here. Because of they satisfy the same relations, uh, we get the desired equality after comparing a simple base case. To summarize, the strategy to relate Whittaker functions to partition functions of lattice models, or indeed special polynomials to partition functions, is done by comparing recursion relations to young baxter equations. And using this, we have studied in a series of papers, Ivahori and Parahori Whittaker functions, uh, crystal Dimazur atoms, and we're currently working on metaplectic Ivahori Whittaker functions. These metaplectic Ivahori Whittaker functions are Ivahori Whittaker functions on the metaplectic n covers of GLR. Uh, of F, some uh, non-Archimedean local field. Their uh, spherical counterparts are identified with the p-parts of multiple Dirichlet series, and the corresponding lattice model obtained by including these mirrored paths here, uh, shown by dashed lines. And the corresponding quantum group is U cubed GLRN. A problem we have been thinking about for some time is how to obtain the vertex weights directly from the quantum group. And for this, we need to figure out the correct module for the vertical edges, uh, which so far has been elusive. A lot of work in these papers is going into determining the weights and prove that they satisfy the Young-Baxter equation. But giving this module, this would follow directly. So if you have any ideas about this, I would love to discuss it over tea. Thank you very much. Questions? Do you know how to uh, uh, address the last question uh, in the limit when Q goes to zero? When Q goes to zero? Um, I think we have, no, I haven't really considered that. Um, so the Q goes to zero limit, I, um, if I remember correctly, it would go to the five vertex model. And we haven't really considered the, the, the module for that one, no. 
but it's a uh, yeah it's 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 a it's a interesting idea because we use this five vertex model uh, to compute uh, the colored five vertex model to compute this demosphere acting um, demosphere atoms, which was a stepping stone to the next paper. So indeed, it's a good idea to start start there. Yes. Is there a representation theoretic explanation for why quantum group shows up, like not passing through these combinatorial models? Right. So. For example, if you compute the, um, in the metaplectic case, if you compute the so-called kashtan Patterson scattering matrix, which tells you how the intertwining operators commute with uh, Ivory, the, the Vitica functional, um, the scattering matrix is actually the R matrix for, for the quantum groups. So here you have a, a direct connection to quantum groups without going through, through the lattice models. any other questions so uh, thanks to uh, uh, Henry and all the speakers uh, this hour thank you